Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about 9 to 5, the movie starring the 1980 film starring Dolly Parton and Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, and also Dab- Dabney Coleman. Uh, so this movie, um, oh, there are major spoilers for the film 9 to 5 in this content. Okay. So, my rating for this movie is this is a four out of five star movie. Uh, It is a comedy. I thought it was funny and enjoyable. All right. So, let's talk about this film. So, my, um, the reason why I watched this film was uh, Lily Tomlin. I'm a real, real, real big fan of Lily Tomlin. I think she's one of the smartest actresses in, um, in Hollywood. Uh, she just really, I, I, I've enjoyed her in almost every single thing, every, every single project I've ever seen her in. I think she's just really funny, um, and, uh, did a really interesting job of carefully maintaining her career over the years in Hollywood, because that is not an easy thing to do. Uh, I consider Lily, so there, in this movie, Lily Tomlin is probably at the height of her popularity and fame. And uh, she does a tremendous job in this movie. I think she's really, uh, actually, all three, Jane Fonda and um, Dolly Parton and Lily Tomlin and Dabney Coleman, is a very, very, very well acted movie. Um, it's it's really, uh, it's you can tell that people cared about this film. Like this wasn't just cobbled together. Like it was, it was carefully made. And it's, it's a really interesting film. And while it's a comedy, it deals with some very important social, uh, political, cultural, and social issues. Which, if you, you know, if you listen to my content, you know, I care deeply about topics that... This, this is really what I like a lot, is something that is entertaining, but also discusses political, culture, and social trends and elements. And, uh, and this movie really does that, right? So, uh, the story is that, uh, these three women work, are all knowledge workers, okay, one of them is a secretary, one of them is a manager, and one of them is a, um, kind of a, um, an individual contributor, that's the best way to say it, that's, uh, Jane Fonda's character, uh, Dolly Parton is a secretary, and Lily Tomlin is a manager, right, and so, These three women all work in, uh, and it's really never discussed what this company does, but essentially it's like a conglomerate, and it does finance work, and it it deals with inventory and those kind of things, like uh, a large conglomerate, and they work in a traditional office building, right? And so this movie is really talking about the state of labor for knowledge workers, which is really interesting because there have been many worker, many, you know, movies about, uh, you know, how challenging it is for people to work in traditional labor jobs, but this is one of the first movies, now this isn't new now, but this movie is 38 years old, it came out in 1980, right, so this is a 38 year old movie that talks about the working conditions of labor workers with an emphasis on females in the work environment, uh, you know, uh, women specifically in the work environment. So, uh, so the overall story is that these three women, uh, Jane Fonda's character is new. She's a, an older woman, uh, maybe like 38 or 40, uh, between like 35 and 40 coming into the workforce because she was just divorced because her husband, uh, left her for his secretary. Right. Uh, and then, you know, and I think this is coming out of like those swinging eighties, you know, when people are really like, Oh, divorce is no big deal. Um, you know, now actually we're way past that now where, uh, divorce is mess much, much less of a deal for many people because many people are choosing simply not even to get married. So like, the, it's interesting that that, that cultural issue has, has actually progressed. It has the, the needle has moved on that. I don't know if I would call that progress that people get, that are more, it seems like there are less and less divorces because more and more people are simply choosing not to get married. I'm not, I'm not sure that's a good trend, but that's, it's definitely one of the things that's happened in the 38 years from, from this film. Uh, then also is talking about, uh, you know, a traditional, so Dabney Coleman and Dolly Partner, part, uh, Dolly Parton, that's a traditional boss. Uh, secretary uh, dynamic, and you're, you know they're showing how Dabney Coleman was incredibly, you know, because it was he was a sexual harasser in this in this film. Specifically, the boss in this film, they have a term for him. They said 
sexist, arrogant, sexist, egotistical, lying, uh, hypocritical bigot, right? That, that, you know, and so they're kind of, which, and it's really interesting that they use that term because they're saying, these are all the things that we're really frustrated with in the work environment, with dealing with management. This is kind of stuff that, you know, we have to deal with on a daily basis. And so it was really, it was a really interesting film. Um, and so the idea, and then, uh, and so Dolly Parton is a traditional uh, secretary, and they use the term secretary. I understand that uh, the term secretary is no longer actually used today. It's administrative assistant, uh, but they use the term secretary in this movie. And it is a very traditional secretary role, right? Uh, where, like, literally, like, uh, I'm going to schedule, do your schedule and, you know, take some dictation, that kind of thing. All right? And so, um, so from there, uh, Lily Tomlin has a very interesting uh, position. In this. She is a, a very, very competent, highly competent manager within the corporation. And she's in a position where she's been waiting for a promotion. And she's worked, been working incredibly hard for a promotion for a long time, right? Also, in the movie, she is presented as a single mother, okay? Uh, which, you know, looks to be very challenging from a time perspective and all these kind of things. But she, but one, I, I, I by far, I really liked Lily Tomlin in this movie. I think, it, and she was worth the price of admission. Uh, I've always really, I just really, she's one of my favorite actresses. And I really, really liked her in this role. And I, I really liked seeing her in this role. Uh, just super bright lady, uh, just fun to watch in every single role. In this role, in this movie, she wears, uh, it's really fascinating, she wears American apparel, not not the store American apparel. She wears American clothing that is that has a- aesthetics of Japanese culture. Really, really interesting. Very, and actually that's the interesting thing too, is the way they, they dress everybody in the movie is, re- you know, very period and, uh, oh, the cars are wonderful. There's an awesome Buick Skylark in this film. Uh, it's just a really fun movie to watch. It, it is, uh, it's really, really interesting. But it did have a message, which was very, very interesting as well. So the idea in this is that these three women are all working in this, this same building, and they all have their own challenges. So uh, Lily Tomlin, she's incredibly competent, but she won't be recognized for her work, and she's continually passed over, including one time in this movie where a man is promoted in front of her, and, and the boss actually says, it's because it's a man, right? And, you know, we need a man in this role. And so she gets really angry, you know, legitimately so, and, you know, so, so that's part of it. That's her, her struggle is that she's competent, but nobody will recognize, recognize her competency. And uh, Dolly Parton is dealing with sexual harassment, which is a very problematic problem. But what goes even a step further than that is Dolly Parton, which uh, it was very interesting the way they, they dealt with this in a movie. Dolly Parton was like, I don't need to be saved from this, uh, this sexual harasser. I can, you know, uh, I can deal with sexual harassment on my own, right? But what she really couldn't deal with and what she struggled with, and this, this was fascinating in the movie. Uh, by the way, this movie was the idea of Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda took this to the Hollywood structure and said, I want to make this movie. So this, this the genesis of this movie was Jane Fonda, right? And so, so she said what she really struggled with was that there was this concept out there because her boss had said he was sleeping with his secretary, wrongfully lying about that, right? That Dolly Parton then really was ostracized by all, by all of the women she worked with because they, they felt she was sleeping to get to the top. And she kept trying to fix this and couldn't and was frustrated because she didn't know that her boss was lying and saying that she was sleeping around, right? So so was, that was like one step further. Like sexual harassment clearly was a problem. And the movie was saying, hey, this is wrong, right? But it was also saying there's there's a step further. There's a part of this problem that, that we also need to deal with, which is women you know, looking at other women who are in a sexual harassment um, position, really, you know, who are being sexually harassed, there needs to be a bond and, and support for those women while they're in the middle of that struggle, which is like, wow, it's, it's kind of a deep, it was a deep topic. I was surprised the movie went there. Uh, and then the last one was uh, Jane Fonda, who was dealing with what, how does a woman who has uh, been out of the workforce and then enters the workforce after divorce, her struggle. And so that, show, that is shown in that uh, she doesn't have the skill sets to do the job the way she should, right? And so she has to overcome that very, very quickly. And there's a lot of like Lucille Ball moments with like a copier where, you know, just paper flying everywhere and, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, 
you know, but it, it, you, it, the movie did a really good job of painting a picture of the different struggles that women have in the workplace, right? So, um, and then, so basically what happens at that point is, uh, you know, they're all abused by this boss and it comes to a point where the boss, uh, gets in this period of time, it's about six to eight weeks where, uh, his wife is on vacation. Uh, he's supposed to be going away for a little while. And, uh, and he is accidentally poisoned by Lily Tomlin, goes to the hospital. They think he's dead for a minute. And there's like this whole two or three scenes of, of hijinks where they're carrying around this dead body away from the hospital. Then they bring it back to the hospital. And then the next day they find out the boss is still alive. But they, they, you know, but then he discovers that they accidentally poisoned him and he blackmails them. Well, they turn the tables on him and go from blackmail to actually kidnapping him. And then in the six to eight, and then in the six weeks uh, that um, that they have where his wife's on vacation and he's not expected to be at the office, they actually run the office for six weeks. And in that six weeks, the women put into place what would be essentially a dream environment. If, 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 if three women were designed a work environment, this is what it would be like. And they literally transform the, uh, the office. One, they make it far more colorful, right? And then in addition to that, they get down to the really nitty gritty, the stuff that matters, which is um, Fesca, right? So, they, uh, so the Fesca is um, flexible work hours. So they implement flexible work hours. They in- implement equal pay for male and female employees. They implement job sharing. So, you know, eight-hour job, somebody comes in and works from from, uh, eight to four, and then somebody else comes in from noon to four and finishes the job out, job sharing. Uh, Daycare center. They they put a daycare center on the very same floor where the people are working, right? And then also, uh, so they have a daycare center. And then addiction, um, addiction assistance, right? So there's a woman who is addicted to alcohol, and she gets, uh, she goes to rehab, which is funded by the corporation, and then she's brought back, and she actually transforms into a very productive uh, worker and a much happier person, right? And so, so the movie, you know, you get to see if there were, you know, if a woman were able to design the perfect work environment, this is what it looks like. And at the end of the movie, they show that, you know, that if you were to do this and if you were to transform your work environment into this perfect area, their proposition in the film is that it increases productivity by 20, by 20%, right? And so that, pe- and the reason why is people are happier and so they respond more and they, they work harder, right? Or they work more productively. Don't, it doesn't say they work harder. It's saying that productivity increases 20%, right? Now, uh, what happens at that point is the boss's boss, you know, Dabney Coleman's boss comes down and, it, oh, at this point, Dabney Coleman escapes and he comes back to the office. He comes back to the office at the exact moment when his boss comes down, you know, from on high and says, Dabney Coleman, you've done a great job and I'm going to, I want you to run all my, uh, run all my, you know, businesses in, uh, in uh, Brazil, right? you know, and then uh, Lily Tomlin is promoted directly into uh, Dabney, Coleman's, Dabney Coleman's position. And in addition to that, um, uh, Jane Fonda, the, uh, the way her, things turn out for her character is that she falls in love with the Xerox uh, repair man. And gets married and quits, you know, quits working there. I think, yeah, I don't know. Like they just said that she falls in love with the Xerox class. Maybe she continues working there. I'm not sure of that. And then also, um, Dolly Parton uh, then quits the job and becomes a uh, country singer, which I thought those 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 last two were kind of unusual, like kind of a weird ending for that, uh, you know. But it was in there and uh, is really really fascinating. I, I now one of the things that really makes me think is. So, you know, this happened 38 years ago. What what happened, right? So they were like, hey, this is what a work environment should be. Where are we at today? And uh, it's interesting because I think, uh, I think William Gibson was right. The future is here, but it's unevenly distributed. So every single thing in this movie, virtually every single place that I have worked, every single place I have ever worked uh, since I was, you know, since I got out of college has had one or all of those benefits, all of them, 
right? One or all of them. Now, I think, you know, one of the things, if you were to ask people today, hey, you know, did the dreams that were talked about in 9 to 5 come true for everybody? Excuse me. They would say, uh, no, they haven't, and that would be absolutely true. I think all of those elements that are talked about in the film are existent today uh, in knowledge worker jobs at, pro at, at um, prominent and successful companies, right? Either one or all of those elements are, are existent. They're not rare at all anymore. However, what if you work in a minimum wage job? Well, in that case, you're probably going to have none of those. And that is, uh, that's still a struggle, I think, for, for, uh, for women workers. And that was the subject of the film. So um, it was really, really interesting. A few things about, a few more things about the movie that I, uh, you know, so when I watched the movie, and then again, because I'm such a Lily Tomlin fan, I actually, um, you know, read a little bit about it. And I found out that this was Jane Fonda's idea. Uh, so she had the idea for it. Uh, she had someone else write it. Um, it was original. Oh, and so Jane Fonda's original uh, concept for the film was that she wanted it to be uh, a drama. And so she was going to be like, it was not going to be a comedy at all. And, and so they wrote it and it was, she was like, this is crazy preachy. Right. And so she was like, I want this to be an entertaining movie. People are going to go to this. They're going to have fun. They're going to enjoy the film. Right. So, um, and, and I don't want it to be a big preach fest, right? And I thought that was really smart of her because she's exactly right. I don't think 9 to 5 is, by the way, it was incredibly successful. It cost, it had a budget of $10 million with three of the top female stars at the time. Nowadays, I, I, I'm not sure you could cover, you know, uh, Jennifer Lawrence's pay alone with $10 million. Like, so back in 1980, this entire film cost $10 million. And I think that was a big budget film at the time. You know, like, it just really goes to show. It made, so the movie cost $10 million to make. It made $103 million. It made 10 times its budget, right? So it actually, uh, and today, the best... Um, the best measurement of whether a, a film is successful is if, if it triples its budget. And this, this, you know, it did, it, it made its budget back by a factor of 10, right? That, that's like crazy, right? By, you know, by a multiple of 10, excuse me, not a factor. Um, and so, you know, so I think that was really interesting. Um, just the, the way that it was, you know, it was actually structured. Uh, so it was very, it was very commercially successful. Uh, in addition to that, it, it spawned a television show that had 85 episodes, right? And Dolly Parton took the movie and turned it into a musical, which debuted in 2009, I believe on Broadway. So it's been a successful musical. So this was a fully, fully successful film in, in every possible way. So Jane Fonda created this thing, you know, uh, you know, kind of pushed for it to be created. It was her idea and she was able to get it created and, and created in the way that she wanted. Right. And so I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, there had been concerns about having three female stars at the height of their career and they really were. So this was Lily Tomlin at the height of her career. This is Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton actually was not at the height of her career. She was at the height of her career. I would say, uh, as a singer and songwriter. Right. But this movie just catapulted her into the American mainstream and made her name uh, known throughout America and, and subsequently throughout the world, right? So it, it catapulted her from country music star to American celebrity, right? And so that's kind of interesting. And then uh, Jane Fonda, uh, I think this was just one more uh, film, you know, in her... Um, you know, in her, you know, portfolio of, of successful films. Uh, and Jane, of course, Jane Fonda is the, the daughter of Henry Fonda. So it was, it was a very, very interesting film. Uh, last thing is I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I watched it. So, um, so, you know, uh, me and my wife were just looking for something to watch and, uh, we were talking amongst ourselves and we decided to watch, um, nine to five. Right. And so when we watched this, uh, we went to our streaming services, right? And so we have uh, Amazon and um, Netflix and uh, we, Crunchyroll and YouTube. Well, actually, YouTube free. You know, um, we actually have YouTube Red, and uh, and I think we have another uh, and Hulu, right? And Hulu. 
And among all those, this thing was not streaming anywhere there. But I will tell you right now, whenever, you know, I, I'm very, very blessed with me and my wife. If there's something we want to watch, which, you know, maybe we'll do this once a week, right? Well, you can't do this every night because it gets expensive. But we paid $3 and we were able to just get this thing queued and running on YouTube. By the way, recently I tried to use Voodoo and uh, their their interface was very bad. The payment failed. And, uh, and you know, and when that happened, I switched over to YouTube. And I've been using YouTube to purchase movies almost exclusively. Absolutely seamless. Really, really nice. Um, and we and we went from saying, hey, I want to watch this movie to actually watching it within literally like 30 seconds, which was really, really nice. So I uh, definitely really enjoyed that. Uh, I So four out of five star movie. I really enjoyed 9 to 5. Very funny movie with a good message. And I think it carried its message with an entertaining uh, milieu. It was really excellent. Take care. Bye-bye.